Hello my soccer universe, it was bound to happen that we get some stinkers and I was so happy after the Netherlands Poland game because that was probably the best game of the tournament so far, at least it was tight, it was going up and down, yes the Netherlands were better but it was a really good game. Then Slovenia Denmark I was already a little bit less excited about but it was also, when Denmark showed some stuff, Slovenia showed some stuff but yeah it was kind of a middling uh, game but then the first real stinker in the evening, I mean England against Serbia, England played for 15 minutes and Serbia didn't dare to play and when they started playing yeah it showed that England can be put on the back foot however still England barely conceded any chances so yeah that was a little bit of a tough evening let's hope it doesn't keep going like that although my hopes for today especially up until the evening are not that high but hey I'm here to be proven wrong or to be surprised as well Jersey bingo, next uh, one up, I got only one wrong and that was the Netherlands, they played in blue against Poland when I thought they would be playing in all orange, uh, it dawned on me, I mean I didn't really see the warm up but it dawned on me, they might actually play in all blue here because the red pants of Poland and the orange pants of the Netherlands, UEFA will not like that one, so it proved to be all the other matchups I at least got right, so hey at least some positive from that day. Let's start actually in Group D with this uh, great Poland-Netherlands game. This was a wide open game and you know great atmosphere, but lots of Polish fans there, not lots of Dutch fans there. It's a little bit closer to Hamburg for the Dutch and of course Hamburg is the site of one of the most famous wins in Dutch history, the 1988 semi-final where they beat Germany. So you saw a lot of uh, Ruth Hüllitz and homages there and you know, Marco von Bust and all that kind of stuff. I especially liked a 1988 remake jersey where it said Neil Mateus because he gave the Germans the lead but you know it was all good fun the fan march you saw the Dutch people jump from left to right this whole car it was just amazing what the Dutch can do uh, but there was also some ugly scenes in Hamburg as well that were not related to the entire tournament has also to be said the game itself I mean the Netherlands came out storming but Poland did not sit back Poland actually wanted to play with the Netherlands and that made it a really intriguing and open game but it also has to be said that Memphis Depay he has to convert the chances the same thing goes for Tijani Reinders they were creating I mean Xavi Simons and Gakpo especially they kept the offensive machine going for the Netherlands again finishing let them down and they were duly punished a corner kick from Zielinski and uh, Buxer heads it in it was more or less the first Polish chance but as I said Poland did not sit back and defend it was just that they allowed the Netherlands to have a little bit more open spaces and so the Netherlands actually could create some chances and especially as I said Tijani Reynos from Milan had a few good ones there was some nice counter attacks but I also say if it wasn't for a deflected shot by Koli Kakpo this goes 1-0 Poland into the half but then Memphis Depa had a huge chance to actually give the Dutch the lead which would have fully been deserved the second half started a little bit slower still the Dutch being in control but then there was a period where Poland actually had some really good chances at themselves and the Dutch were on the back foot then the game fell a little bit asleep Q Ronald Koeman made some changes he first brought on Wijnaldum and Marlen to kind of make the, the midfield a little bit more uh, secure but then he took off Gakpo and Depay and brought off Rimpong and Weichhorst that's some real offensive power there and it didn't take long for Ake to pl uh, play a pass to Weichhorst and he puts it into the net Ake actually is assisting both of the goals and the Dutch are often running and you know what Weichhorst is one of those stories he keeps again scoring important goals for the Dutch. From an Austrian perspective the draw would have been probably the better result but I have to say you know my Dutch heart came through. The Dutch are always one of my two teams at the Euros that I always support. The other one of course being Italy and now if you wonder this is very contradictory yes think of it AC Milan in the late 80s early 90s that was the Italian Dutch connection for me. But yeah the Dutch are off to a good start. I personally think Poland didn't give them enough pressure. I think if the Dutch defense is pressured, you saw there was a pretty bad pass from Van Dijk at one point. There are, there are errors in there, so I don't think that the Dutch will be one of the favorites to win it, but hey, I might be proven wrong there. Let's go over to Group C where we had Slovenia take on Denmark and Denmark actually started out roaring. At, at first I thought, you know, 
this Slovenia team will get something of Denmark and then I was almost eating my words because for the first 20 minutes or so uh, Slovenia didn't show much and Denmark took the lead through Eriksen that's probably one of the best stories of the tournament already because it was only three years ago that he had a heart attack at the Euros when they're playing in Copenhagen against Finland and now he scores a goal I mean it was I think three years and four days something like that it was actually all a very well taken goal it was a, a hoil on the run that goes into a throw in that Bar throws in Wind backhills it into Eriksen's pass and he scores the 1-0. However, then Slovenia came also and you know Vyshezko, they have a really good strike up front and also Spora. There's some real talent in this Slovenia side, I gotta say. And they kept it an actual level and with some luck they would have gotten an equalizer. But the one thing I saw for Slovenia, they were misfiring. Second half, a little bit slower everything. Um, but Denmark, again, had a little bit more of the initiative. But like Switzerland the day before, I felt that Denmark are tiring out. And then late on it was Slovenia pushing. Vyshezko hitting the post with a thunderous shot that then the results in the corner and from the corner the ball falls to Janja whose shot is deflected into the net and my favorite reaction of the tournament so far you could see Schmeichel he is flying to save Janja's shot and he sees the deflection uh, this is going in I absolutely love that, that reaction but I think while Denmark was probably overall the better team Slovenia deserves to get something out of this it was also the first draw it was not the greatest game but it was actually enjoyable to watch unlike Serbia England yes I would say for 15 minutes Serbia England was good especially what the English showed England there was a very fluid mobility in there you had Alexander Arnold in there you had Saka you had Foden you had Bellingham all the big stars that you want to see and they combined well took the lead when a Saka cross is deflected and you could see Bellingham's run from the edge of, of the box where he's already showing to Saka hey here I am the ball was never intended for him but he makes the run and heads it in very good but then it was south get ball as you would expect it just keep it not slow let's slow it down and let's get the game home and to their credit if that was the intention I have to say that England didn't allow many Serbian chances there were barely any shots on goal I mean if you look at the expected goals that's they tell you a story of this entire game on the other side the first time that Serbia pressed Mitrovic had a really good chance to get an equalizer already in the first half and this is where I actually blame a little bit Serbia because they were in their own shell. I mean, if they would have pressed a little bit more, especially in the first half, I think they could have gotten something out of the game. Second half, they actually tried, but it was more crosses in or passes in that never found the end product. I remember Vlaovic shot from far out. That was always going to be a low chance of it going in. And there was another one where Pickford made an easy save, but that was basically it. I mean, Serbia didn't produce much, although they created some dangerous situations. But at least this is the one positive I will see for England. Their defense was relatively solid and everyone says the defense is their weak point however again this was Serbia this was not France this was not Spain and so on so uh, this might be some worry for England overall I have to say the game was a bore fest to the highest degree take of it what you want now interestingly enough these results caused actually quite some changes in the projections not so much for the group C where now Slovenia moves in but for group D where Netherlands with that win are just ahead of the French who have not played yet however if the Netherlands win that group this has a lot of impact on the final bracket because now the French are in the upper half where they're still the strongest team they will still expect to go to the final but instead of Spain against France we have now France against England in the final it might be just momentarily but you know it is a big change in the entire bracket as well I already said today we have three matches I'm not so excited for Romania Ukraine although I think this will be a lot of emotion uh, being played in Munich Belgium against Slovakia I really want to see if this Belgium side will continue their offensive output that they had Slovakia should be a side that they should beat easily and then Austria France the game that I have been looking forward for quite, quite a while I don't expect much from Austria except that they will play the nasty style and with some luck they can get a draw out of it but it is intriguing especially since the French French squad is more interested in politics at the moment and maybe concentrated on the game. I still would expect France to win this probably 1-2-0 something like that. Although Austria has scored now uh, for quite a few games in a row so maybe let's say it, it will be a 2-1 for France and Austria will make a good performance there but it will count against Poland and the Netherlands for Austria. So those are my thoughts for today. As I said 
I was really high on the first game and in the other ones, yeah, it went a little bit downhill. Also, goal average is going down. In any case, let me know your thoughts on this game. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.